Hi, this is BU. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the recent Hegon V107 release. Now, unlike previous releases of Hegon, V107 is based on a new tree-based design, and so I'm going to demonstrate how that works in this video. So when you download and extract Hegon V107, you'll see that there are two executable files, Hegon.exe, which is the emulator itself, and Icarus.exe, which is the tool that's used to import games into a format that Hegon can recognize. We'll start by using Icarus to import our games before we run Hegon. Upon starting Icarus, you'll see a list of supported systems on the left. And for this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Super Famicom and Mega CD emulation. So we'll start by going to Super Famicom. You'll see that there are currently no games imported into our library. The blue text at the top tells you where Icarus will import the games to. And you'll see the defaults to your home folder, slash emulation, slash the name of the system. You can click on the blue text to change the path of where you want to import games to. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to leave it as the default setting. So we'll go to the bottom right and choose Import. And from here, you navigate to where your game images are stored, and you can double click on them to import them. You'll receive a completion log that tells you which games imported successfully with a plus and a minus for any that failed. If you click on any games with a minus, it will give you an error message explaining why. But in this case, the import was successful, so we'll choose Close to return to the main Icarus window, and you'll see that the game was imported successfully. Next, we'll import the Mega CD BIOS file that we will need. And finally, we will import a Sega CD game. Now, currently, Hegon only supports Sega CD images in the bin queue and image queue formats, and they have to be merged to a single file rather than split tracks. You can select multiple images at the same time by using Ctrl and Shift, but in this case, we're just going to import one game, Luna the Silver Star. In the future, Hegon's image file format support will be extended to support other formats. So importing was successful, so now we will close out of Icarus, and we will launch into Hegon. Now, because this is a new release and a new GUI, it is subject to change, and I am looking for feedback on how I can make this more user-friendly, so you'll get a warning that things are subject to change. So we'll choose not to show this message again, and hit OK. Now you'll see from the main window that we have our traditional menu bar, video output in the middle, a status bar in gray, and then at the bottom of the screen is the new panel concept that shows the tree of the emulated systems. The first thing we're going to want to do is configure the emulator. So if you use the drop down here, you can choose settings, and you'll see a list of available settings. We have Direct3D9. wave out for audio, and I like to set the latency a little lower, and default input, and then we have our hotkeys. So I will map some default hotkeys, and one thing to note is while the hotkey window is active so that they don't trigger, no hotkeys will respond to the GUI. Once you've changed away from the hotkeys panel, hotkeys will begin to work. Now that we've configured the emulator, we will return back to systems and we'll begin to create some systems. At the top left in the menu bar, choose System Create, and at the bottom right you'll now get a list of systems that Hegon emulates. We'll select Super Famicom, and you'll see that there's a name box along the bottom. Now the purpose of this setup is so that you can create multiple system profiles. So you might have a Super Nintendo for the NTSC region, one for the PAL region, and perhaps another one that's pre-configured to run Super Game Boy games. But for now we're just going to go with the default Super Famicom system, so we will click on Create, and you'll see that the system appeared on the left. Now if you select the system, you get a preview of the current configuration of the system. Since we just created it, there is no configuration, but this is a read-only view. To activate the system, you double click the system name on the left. And now you'll see the tree structure that I spoke about earlier down at the bottom left. You can see the various components of the system, the cartridge port, controller ports, and expansion port. So we'll first want to connect some controllers. So we'll choose controller port one. And you'll see pluses for templates to create new controller types. So we will make a gamepad, and we will name this gamepad one. And then we will make another gamepad for controller port 2, name gamepad 2. And now we will bind some mappings to our first gamepad. And 
finally, we need to connect the game cartridge. So we choose cartridge port. We see the Legend of Zelda we imported earlier. Double click on it. And now the game has been imported. If you want to remove it, you can double click on nothing and that will take it out. You'll only want to do this while the system is powered off, obviously. And now to run the game, you go to Super Famicom at the top and choose power. Now while you're playing, you can turn off the system panels down at the bottom by going to Settings, Show System Panels. But you will need the panels turned on to configure the system, so we will leave that on for now. Once you finish playing the game, you can power off the system and you can unload the system to return to the main Hikon window. Now we're going to create the Mega CD by starting with the Mega Drive template. And we'll connect a controller as before. And for a Mega Drive, the BIOS does not connect to the cartridge port, it connects to the expansion port. And when we connect the BIOS to the expansion port, you'll see that it expands with the disk tray option to put a CD into the system. We'll choose Leonard the Silver Star that we imported earlier. And you'll see it has appeared in the disk tray. Now we can power on the Mega Drive. The Mega CD does come with unformatted save RAM. So first we have to hit C to go into the BIOS and go to Option. And we have to format our RAM. Once we've done that, we can begin emulating the Sega CD. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.